Hey guys, what is going on Nick here and today we're taking a look at one of the feature in Unity 2017. That's right, Unity is now based off years and not a version. So I moved away from Unity 5 just recently to download the 2017 beta. Um, this one contains a lot of stuff, a lot of really really cool stuff and we'll go over it in the next few weeks. And the first feature I'd like to go over is the timeline feature which is this tab right here at the bottom. Um, but a quick note before that, if you want to head over to Unity Beta 2017, I'll just pick up the link real quick. I simply googled Unity Beta 2017 and it linked me to unity3.com, fr, unity, and then slash beta. You're going to need this or, um, you know, if by now the Unity 2017 is released like publicly, you're going to need that to actually mess around with the feature we're going to mess around today. So first one is the timeline. Timeline is very, very cool, very powerful. And we're going to be making a small demo example here today using this scene, something I brought off the asset story. Link is in the description down below if you want to see it. And this little guy right here, which is the, um, it's the guy from the standard asset actually. So that's something you can download for free. But um, not this pack, the dungeon is not, <laughs> it's not free, but link is in the description below if you're interested. So let's have a look, what is Timeline? Timeline is some kind of animation editor, just like the one we had in the past. So just like this one right here, where is it? Uh, right there. So it's something like this, but you can actually animate multiple objects at a time. And it's really useful because if you want to create cinematics, you'll want to have more than one object moving uh, at the same time. You might want to animate one person, then an object, something like that. The Timeline is perfect for this. Now, I've already went ahead and did a little bit of testing before, so this is going to go <laughs> smoother than I thought. Um, but let's actually get right into it. So, I'd like to create some kind of animation where I have this guy right just running towards this end here, and then he jumps and he lands over here in front of the chest or something like that. So, we're going to take a look at this, how to do it. Um, my object doesn't have any collider on it, doesn't have any rigid body. So basically, it's not able to move on its own. This is only going to be used for cinematic purpose. So it has the animator, a playable director. I'm going to get rid of this. I'll leave the animator because I need the animation on top of this. And we're going to select it. So I have it selected. I have my timeline window. If you don't have it, you can head over to Window, Timeline Editor. And I'm going to hit Create. This is going to be the Jump to Chess cinematic, something like that. Now what I want to do is to actually add animation to this. So this guy has a running animation, he has a jump animation, all that kind of stuff. I want to add that down here so he starts playing some animation. But before I do that, let's head over to the animator and turn off the apply root motion because I don't really want him to move. What I'll be doing right here, right click in the middle of the timeline and say add from animation clip. This way I can now go through all of his animation and decide which one I'll put. So let's start with a run animation. Do we have a run animation? Of course we do. Let's actually double click on it and it's going to go down here. So this is now in the timeline. If I was to play this, you're going to see that he teleported to the origin of the world. So that's 0, 0, 0. Let's just go over here and see him. But now he's playing the running animation, which is exactly what we want. Now my only problem is that he's not playing it from where he should be because I want him to be over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate something else. We're going to animate the transform of this object as well. So to do this, I'll head over back to where I was. I still have him selected and I'll hit control shift and F to move him back where he should be. Maybe just adjust him a little bit. So let's put him back on the ground. And we're going to start animating the transform of this object as well. Now in order to do this, I will drag and drop the third person control again, so he's going to spawn here two times. I will add this as the animation track. And he still moves, so then there's still a little bit of glitches going on, but basically what we're going to be doing right now is turn on the recording of this second track, and then we'll grab him once more. And this is the final time, I hope. Let's do control shift F to move him back, and here he is, so he's back where he should be. And now, as you can tell over here on the right side, it's all red, which means whatever you're doing right now is being recorded. So for the very first frame of this animation, he is going to be standing right here. Now, let's move a little bit forward in time, say, um, 
that's two seconds right here. After two seconds, he could be at the very end of the bridge. So I'm just moving him again. Now make sure you don't mess up your keyframe right here. Um, if you go, say, at 60 and you move him right now, he's going to be saving a keyframe, which is not something you want to do if you have a straight line like this. So as you can tell right now, we have a simple animation, but there is, of course, a few problems with that. First off, the first problem I see is the ease in and then ease out of the running, which is not really what's, you know, that's not something we want. We want to be running at the same exact speed all the time. And there's also something else. The running animation is not long enough. So to fix the later problem, so the animation is not long enough, all we have to do is take this running clip, drag and put it right around here. Now if we press play, this animation is going to be repeated in a loop. It's a little bit better, but you can still see the ease in and the ease out. What I'll be doing right here is we're going to have to modify this animation that we're currently recording. First off, I'll stop recording so I don't mess around with it. I don't accidentally create some new keyframes and uh, we're going to double click on it to open it in the animation window. And this is something we've recorded right here. That's the first keyframe and at the end, the later keyframe. To fix the actual ease in and ease out, I'll go down in the curves. So we'll see the same exact animation, but in curves. And let's try to find out which one we animated that has curves in it. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look right here in the scene. We move on the X axis. So X is going to be the one that is messed up. So let's have a look at X. Where is it? It's right here. And we're going to go at the very end, right click on the keyframe and then put that on auto. So it goes, it goes from a curved line like this with ease to a straight line. Same thing on this side, auto, and now we have this. It is a straight line and we should have a proper animation. Let's close it off. All the changes we've did has been uh, reflected automatically. And as you can tell, there is no ease in, there's no ease out. It is running in a straight line at the same speed. So now here comes the actual timeline feature that we want. Um, we can actually blend animation on this. So when we get to that point over here, we can start a jump. Now to add this animation, we are going to right click, add a new animation from clip and let's find a one that is a jump. So the first one is a idle jump, but it's really the only one that is big enough so we can edit. Um, so I'll be taking the idle jump. Let's have a look at it right now. As you can tell, it starts right here from a idle position and then it starts jumping. So we're going to be modifying this animation, not manually, but we're going to be blending it with the other one so it doesn't look uh, that choppy right now. If we just try and play this, you're going to see that we start running, then we stop for a while and then we start jumping. So we don't want something like that. We'll just be messing around with this just a little bit. Maybe start jumping at around this point. And it's definitely not fast enough. Let's cut it in the front. And we have something a little bit better. So if you want to preview animation, you can also just move your cursor like this without having to play it so much. You can go at your own pace. This is much better. So I'll be using this right here, uh, maybe a little bit less blending. So we can go forward and then at this point, we'll want to lift off. So this is basically how you do the blending. Now let's go ahead and add some more keyframes so we can make this look good. So I tweak the animation a little bit, play with some keyframe. It looks a little bit better. Uh, of course, still need a lot more work. So what I'll do is I'll just cut this animation right here and we'll go into a falling state right there. So again, right click, new animation clip. Let's find, we have a falling, of course we do. Um, there's two, fall, and okay, this one is the wrong guy. And we just keep playing with this. So basically, let's actually repeat the falling animation while we are falling. See if we need some blending in here. So that's good. We have some blending going on. And now we can keep on falling like this until we reach the floor. And there's some clipping here right here. We're going to have to get rid of. But you get the whole idea. We just play around with this. And then when he reaches the floor. So let's add a landing animation. We don't have a landing animation. So we'll use a crouch idle or something like that. We can probably make something good out of the blending. 
uh, some things like this. So it's super fast. We can blend it a little bit slower if we want, like this. And again, uh, it looks a bit messy right now because my keyframes down here, my, my position keyframes are actually all wrong. But of course, you can mess around with that as long as you want to make it look good. So this is a crouch. I'm going to stop the crouching, create a new one again, and finally go into some kind of um, walk. So now we'll also add a walk animation. So once we crouch, we can then go back to walking. So we have a little stop right here. We're going to keep that position for a little while. Save some more keyframes. This is for the position. And then start walking towards somewhere, basically. Doesn't really matter. Maybe here. Okay, let's have a look at this, actually. This is only two, actually, this is only two animation on the same object. Okay, definitely a little bit choppy, need a lot more love, but this is some basic animation we can do with the timeline now. Alright, so those were two animation poorly done on a single object. So um, both victim of those animation were the third person controller. But now uh, with timeline, you can also add more. So we'll just select our timeline right here, jump to chess, and we'll add something else in here. So let's actually add... I feel like adding this piece of rock right here and just make it fall before we land there. So the way we're going to do it, make sure you note it somewhere. So it's going to be this wall. Just remember which one it is, basically. And then we have to click on our base object. So our base object in this case was the third person controller. And I'll just select our wall, this one right here, drag and drop it, and add a new animation track. So now the, the wall is now part of the playable. And if we just move a little bit forward, we start animating this thing. Now, the guy say the, see the guy lands right here. At this point, let's make the wall fall. So at this very exact point, I'm going to start recording the position of the wall, select it, and make sure we save some keyframes. So I'll just slightly move it a little bit, and this way it saved some keyframes. Now what I'll do is, as soon as he land there, I'm going to create a small displacement of this object, and then we're going to make it fall. So maybe something like this, play around with the animation as well the rotation and obviously I'm not an animator guys you can all you can already tell why I'm a programmer but something like this and then we can start making this fall okay it's gonna look pretty from only one angle But that's uh, that's the whole point. So we mess around with multiple objects in a single playable. And that is what Timeline is all about. Super cool. It can be used on a lot of other objects. Let's have a look at our final scene. Our final cutscene, actually. Really bad animation. Need a lot more work. But we actually made it happen in a single file. And if we want to play this, we only have to call it Jump to Chess during the game. And guys, that is what Timeline is all about. There is going to be some more video with Timeline coming fairly soon to cover other mechanics. There is another mechanic called Sna Machine in 2017, which is really good in combination with Timeline. So stay tuned for that. I just wanted to make this quick video and um, show you what is the power of Timeline. Alright guys, thank you so much and I will catch you in the next one.